Hello. Welcome to this very exciting session, which is Breast Screen New South Wales, all your questions about mammograms answered. This is a really brilliant, going, it's going to be a really brilliant session. I'm Jean Kitson and I'm with, well, the leading expert in breast cancer in Australia, one of them, one <laughs> of them, I can't build you up too much, Dr. Nirmala Passman nathan So please, wel please welcome, oh, oh, I'll just clap you. Um, this is a really going to be a really great session where you can answer, you can ask any questions about mammograms that you want to ask. There's no such thing as a stupid question, so please just fire away as you're listening. And we do have a, a wonderful expert uh, with us today to answer your questions. So, but don't take my word for it. Please tell us a bit more about yourself, Nirmala. Oh, thank you, Jean. Um, I, I'm a, the uh, director of the Westmead Breast Cancer Institute, and I'm also the director for the screening program for Sydney West. And I work with the Westmead Millennium Institute um, with, in breast cancer research. So I've had a long-standing history and involvement and obsession with breast cancer. An obsession. <laughs> yes. That's what we like. We want someone completely focused on it who can answer any difficult questions that we might have. I think I might just kick it off while people are sort of getting comfortable because I don't know whether you're at home or work or on the bus, but we hope that you'll ask these questions wherever you are. Um, I might kick it off by asking, taking us right from the very beginning, after we've booked a breast screen, like what can we expect? So um, a woman will book in either themselves or make an appointment for themselves and come into one of our screening venues, which are located all over um, New South Wales in over 200 lo locations. Um, convenient locations, hopefully, so many women can get to it. Yeah. Um, they'll be taken from the um, reception area into the mammography suite. And in the mammography suite, they will be taken uh, accompanied by a radiographer. All our radiographers are female, oh, every great. single one of them, and they're yeah. specifically trained and expert uh, mammographers. So they, this is what they do all the time. So they have very, very um, great deal of experience. Um, in the mammography suite, they will ask the woman to undress, to, so their bra and their top will be removed. They'll pre place their breast in a position on a breastplate on the mammography unit. And these plates are what will, the x-rays will pass through and through the breast tissue. So they will position the breast so that we can see the maximum amount of breast tissue. Then the breasts are compressed and we need to compress the tissue so that we can ensure we see all of the breast tissue. And it'll be compressed in two directions, top to bottom and then side to side. Each of those compressions will last about 10 seconds. And most women will say it's discomfort rather than pain. After that, the women will be sent home and we will send the results out usually within two weeks. Look, if, if, what you've said then is really useful. So, one, here's the first tip. You take your top off, so don't wear a dress. Otherwise, you have to take your whole dress off. And there you are in your granny undies and yeah. it's like... <laughs> two, they're all the radiographers are women, so they empathise. They probably would have had mammograms themselves, so they know how we're feeling. We're feeling probably anxious about what's going to happen and what's going to be discovered. We might be feeling shy because we haven't taken our tops off since the 1970s. Um, so it's good to know that. It's also good to know that like it's only compressed for what, 10 seconds? Yes. And, and what, it, what I found is that it's like a partnership. It's not just someone saying, you know, do this, do that, do this. They'll say that you'd get talked through it all and you have complete control over the amount of compression and when you just go, no, or whatever. But, uh, you know, as you say, for most of us, we don't get to that stop stage. It's really quick. Look, it's, for me, it wasn't as painful as squeezing into some high heels and a, some Nancy Gans for a night out, quite <laughs> frankly. But it's, um, it's a really, really great opportunity to, um, to to have a mammogram, and that's and that's what you know, and that when it, so that's the main point really. Who should get them, and how often should we get them? So, all women between the ages of 50 and 74, we target them specifically, yeah. and that's because that's when the breast cancer incidence is highest. Um, mammograms are the best test for women in this age group, and we recommend that all women have a mammogram every two years. It's very important. So, uh, yeah, it is. So that's a main, that's a main age to have it in. So, um, and perhaps you could tell us why mammograms are so important. Well, mammograms are the only proven way to date um, of screening large populations to ensure that we can pick up cancers in their earliest stages. 
Breast cancer is an incredibly common disease and when we pick it up in its earliest stages, this will enable women to have the best outcomes from their breast cancer treatment. They can avoid the more aggressive treatments yeah. like ma mastectomy and chemotherapy and early detection genuinely saves lives, I firmly believe that. Well, the mammograms show your cancer before you can feel it yourself. Absolutely. Like the yeah. size of a rice grain. So those are you know, yeah. cancers that really cannot be felt. So and it's way before you can feel them. And it's, and it's already proved to save li li lives. Like how many, li th there's a, what is the chance of survival? If it's early detected, it's, you survive. Early detection, 90, over 98%. And breast cancer screening, well, we know it's effective because when it was introduced in 1991, in the decades that followed, there was a reduction in breast cancer mortality by 37%. Partly that's due to improved treatments, but breast cancer screening was definitely part of the reason we had that reduction in mortality. Yeah, so what we're saying is it doesn't matter about the discomfort and, you know, all that because having an early detection tool like a mammogram is essential. And we know you're asking some questions, so I'm going to get straight into them now. I mean, wouldn't it be great to have an early detection tool for ovarian cancer? Yes, that absolutely. would save lives too. But anyway, we've got one. Thank you. Thanks. Um, this is from Naomi. Thanks for your question. If you have had a biopsy in the past, are you at higher risk of having to have it done again? And what is your chance of it being cancer? So, uh, so that depends whether they've had a biopsy in the breast screening program or not, I guess. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the chances of having another biopsy are higher. One of the things we know through the screening program is if you have repeated imaging, then we've got the previous year's imaging to compare against. And when you've got images to compare against, your likelihood of needing a biopsy are less. And the likelihood of getting cancer, well, that's the same as your popula the population. I mean, one in eight women will develop breast cancer. We know that, that this is a very common disease which is all the more reason that, you know, having a mammogram every two years is important. Well, Naomi, I just want to say that I've had a biopsy in the past. I had one about eight years ago, and I get regular breast, screening, breast screens, and I've never had to have one since. Yes. It's it was probably just because they've got the images from the previous one to compare against. To and that comparison is a really important part of the test. That's right, it is, isn't it? So they can see how you, what, you know, what's going on, what's been going on yes. for me for the last you know, like 10 years or more, more, more actually. Um, here's another one. Can I get a breast screen if I have breast implants? Thanks for this question. That's yeah, good, good question. Good question. Yes, and absolutely yes, you can. Um, the important thing is to know is that our radio radiographers are specifically trained in handling women who've had breast implants. It is important also that the women notify the, at the time of making the booking or their appointment to notify them that they do have implants so we can you know, allocate the appropriate people and allow the appropriate amount of time and techniques to be used. Oh, great. Yeah. Great. That's a good one. Um, well, we're talking a lot at the moment about family history. Like, is it, is, if you, are women more at risk if they have a history of breast cancer in their family? Well, that's a difficult question. Um, the risk of breast cancer um, is high across the population. As I said before, one in eight women will develop breast cancer. So it's a really common cancer. So it won't be un unusual for someone in your family to have had breast cancer. But really what we're talking about when we're talking about an increased risk of breast cancer is a significant family history. So there are certain features, certain criteria that you need to meet to have what they call a significant family history. That includes having a first degree relative, that's the medical speak for your immediate relatives, brother, sister, mother, father, um, who has had breast cancer under the age of 50. If you've got two people who've had breast cancer on the same side of the family, um, or if they've had breast and ovarian cancer or bilateral cancer. So it's a little bit complicated. It's getting complicated. Yes, absolutely. So I'm a little, I mean, even listening to you now, I'm thinking, uh, I had an aunt who had breast cancer, but does, is that significant or not? So how should we sort of unpack all that? What should we do to relieve our anxiety yeah, about that? Totally understand, because it's common, and a lot yeah. of women do have this anxiety. I think the best thing to do is to go and see your GP where they can take a detailed family history and from there they can make a decision whether or not to refer you to a familial cancer or a high-risk clinic for further screening. Because something that I found out only recently, and which was a shock to me, was that 9 out of 10 women who are diagnosed with breast cancer don't have it in the family. Because I know a lot of women put it off because they go, oh well I may not need it because I've got, um, you know, I haven't got a history of it in yeah. the family. But 9 out of 10 don't have a history of it. Well, that's a really good point. 
most women develop breast cancer don't actually have a family history yeah, of breast cancer. Yeah, that's so amazing. You shouldn't use that as an excuse not no. to have a mammogram. No. What a, and also my gym membership is fully paid up. Should I still have one? No, it's not actually. But a lot of women think, hey, I'm fit. Why should I have a mammogram? It has nothing to do with it. It can strike anyone at any time. Right. Have we got some more questions? Um, well, actually, there's um, one here. After having a mammogram, how soon will I get my results? Well, you've sort of answered that one, really, haven't you? Yeah, well, the reason for the two-week delay, and we do often get asked that question, is that your mammogram will be independently read by two, in, two radiologists or readers. And right. that's a really important way of ensuring we don't miss small things, because these are tiny cancers that we're looking for. If there's disagreement between those two radiologists or readers, then it'll go to a third reader. So that whole process, which is really necessary to ensure we don't miss anything, um, will take a two-week period. It's, it's just doing things very thoroughly. Yes, that's good. So that's what you want. Absolutely. You want that. So that's another reason to get a mammogram because no one's going to tell you at the time. You know, they're not going to look at your x-rays and go, mm, you know, they're not going to do anything. So you just go in and get it done and then you wait. So you needn't be worried that someone's going to tell you any bad news while you're there. I always take a breast screen buddy actually with me because we've been motivating and encouraging each other for about 10 years and then we go out to cake. It's good. Um, here's another question. Will there be any side effects from radiation during a mammogram? So a mammogram is an x-ray, so there is a small amount of radiation that women will be exposed to, but we are exposed to radiation every day as we go yeah. about our usual life. So a mammogram is about the same amount of exposure of radiation that you will get eight weeks of just walking around and doing your ordinary things. And it's, well, and that exposure, I mean, Compared to the results, if you, you know, compared to what happens if you get early diagnosed and, you, and it increases your chances of survival and Absolutely. you can treat it early, detection and all that, it's just a small, it's that whole risk benefit. Absolutely. The benefit is huge and the risk is very small. Yeah. Um, oh, here's one from someone under 50. Should I still get a mammogram if I'm under 50? So mammography or, or breast x-rays are really the best tool for women over the age of 50. And the right. reason for that is because your breast tissue changes um, in, in its composition. And the x-rays penetrate much better through women's breasts of women who are over the age of 50. So they're less dense, so the x-rays penetrate better, so you'll get a better visualisation of the breast tissue. So it's much better for women over the age of 50, but Breast Screen New South Wales does allow all women over the age of 40 to this free, wonderful service. They can still come in and have a mammogram through our service. Oh, that's great. So if they're at all concerned, you can go in and... Absolutely. Yeah, but okay, so that answers the question. We have another one here. Thank you very much. Um, this one is, what is breast density? Is that the same as lumpy breasts? Because I have lumpy breasts. Kind Don't of. tell anyone, please. <laughs> So anyway, so what is breast density? So breast density is something that's being talked about a little bit nowadays. Um, it refers to the ratio of fatty tissue in the breast to fibrous and glandular tissue. So as we get older, unfortunately, the fatty tissue increases and the glandular tissue and the fibrous tissue decrease. So they become, it, it atrophies is the medical word. So the, the amount of well, fatty not tissue... Not another <laughs> thing that happens when we get older. <laughs> unfortunately, Atrophy true. Atrophy of the breast. I've never heard that before. That's so cruel of you. <laughs> so the bre oh, we so should atrophy <laughs> up here, actually. So the problem. ratio of that tissue it changes. So right. it's more fatty as you get older. Right. Now, there is some discussion and research in the medical literature that, that points to the fact that when women have denser breast tissue, they are at a somewhat higher risk of breast cancer. So that has come up um, and it has been raised in certain um, research circles mainly. Yes, I think that's why I've been getting very regular ones because, I, you know, you feel your own breast and you go, oh, you know, there's a lump and then you pass out because you're <laughs> so upset but then um, no they're just there so what, sh uh, what should women this is the second part this, what should women with dense breasts do to manage their breast health so yes what should we do um, at this although point, mine are atrophied now they're not dense at all no, but I shouldn't uh, have used the word no I know <laughs> <Relax>. please <laughs> um, important thing to, no to know is that mam mammography is still going to be the best screening test and as far as we know with all the research that we have and all the studies that have been done, mammography is the best test for screening um, in terms of screening a whole population of women. Um, 
what we should also realize is that women over the age of 50 mammography is, going to, is still the best test. So if you're over the age of 50 and you're, you don't have any symptoms or a lump or anything, having a mammogram every two years is the best thing that you can do for yourself. Right. Well, that's a really good message. Yeah. We have another question. Hey, thank you for all your questions because even if you, even if you have a question that you think you know the answer of, because Nermalyn's here, you know, she just adds all this other information in and it really helps. So, oh, where can I have a mammogram? And do you offer ultrasound? I'm going to ask you a double whammy question. Okay, a double part question. Okay, the first part of that question, where can you have a mammogram? They are, there are screening locations over 200 in New South Wales. And we try to make it as convenient and accessible for women as possible. They're located in Myers stores, Sunflower Clinics, in David Jones stores, Rose Clinics. There are also mobile units and other locations across oh, New yeah. South Wales. You can find this out from the Breast Screen New South Wales website. And 13 20 50 is the number that you call and they will tell you your nearest and best location. So if you're in regional areas or rural Absolutely. areas, and, um, there will be a mobile unit comes to your area, what, once a year or something like uh, that? No, the very on a regular basis. On a regular so, basis. Yeah, so, so you can no definitely excuse. find no excuses. No. Come in from the farm, go into town, have some cake afterwards. Definitely, yeah, no yeah. excuses. So they're, they're accessible all over New South Wales. Yes. So the second part of the question was, do we offer ultrasounds? Yes. We don't offer ultrasounds in the screening setting because we don't believe that that's the best tool. The best tool is to have a mammogram every two years. A mammogram is the best screening test for breast cancer, especially for women over the age of 50. So no, we no. don't offer it in the screening setting. Right, yeah. right. Oh, well, that's good. That's, um, that's good to know. I like the way in the beginning you were talking about um, you go into the mammogram suite. <laughs> Sounds like there's, you know, telly, bed. Sounds like a hotel, really. <laughs> the suite. We try to make it as comfortable as possible. Yes, yeah, so there's a couch. You lie yeah. down. Here, <laughs> take my breath. <laughs> um, that's really good. Well, I think it looks like we're really sort of nearing the end of this session. Have you got any more questions? Because just type away and we, we can answer one or two. Otherwise, we're really, well, oh, we've got one. Okay. Thank you. Why don't they start screening at 40? So that's yeah. a good question too. That's a question too. we get, often get asked and it's yeah. an important question. So as I, I was talking a little bit before about breast density and the composition of breast tissue. Once a woman turns 40, once a woman turns 50, uh, mammograms become the most effective screening tool. Women under the age of 50 have more dense breast tissue and so it's harder to screen these women with mammography. It's right. not, as be not as effective. Not as effective, so best to start. But if you've got but it any- it is still free and the, it is still available. So women over the age of 40 can still, still do it. Yes. And, and do you just sort of talk to your doctor about Absolutely. it, your GP about all these yes, things? Good yeah. Advice. yeah, yeah. And if you've had, like I spoke to a friend today, I was telling her I was doing this and she said, I got called back and she never went back when you know and that was two years ago and I said to her please I'm going to I'm going to she lives in another state but I'm going to go and drive her there myself Definitely. but I, I think people get very anxious of course they do but this is the best way to calm to release your anxiety because Absolutely. she's been hanging on to that anxiety now for two years I said just go and see what's going on and when you get a call back it doesn't mean you've got cancer at all does no. it didn't no, you say no, no. no so only a small proportion of women so between three and five percent of women will be recalled with an abnormality yeah and of those only a small proportion will have a biopsy and of those an even smaller fraction will actually end up having right. cancer okay but, you know we're just being very cautious and making sure we investigate everything right great look you are doing a marvelous job I know you we're looking over there we're getting the wind up I know you want to go and have dinner with your family something have a drink no cake um, <laughs> so thank you to Dr. Nirmala Pam Pam Pathmananthem <laughs> why did that, that happen <laughs> right at the end Pathmananthem sorry about that yeah so it's great no, um, Nirmala's um, you know shared her wisdom and her experience and her expertise it's been really great thank you and I'm just sort of call you Dr. Nirmala <laughs> and um, if you got one or two any Final words? Well, I, all I can say is best advice to women over the age of 50, please have a mammogram. It's a free service. It's an excellent, high quality, high standard service with all women's staff. So I can only say ring 13 20 50, make an appointment for your mammogram and have a mammogram every two years. Thank you. Thanks very much. Well, thank you for tuning in. And to all my friends who may not identify as women but have breasts, please get your breasts 
screens done too. And um, if you have any more questions, just put it on Facebook messaging and we'll, we'll answer them, you know, on Facebook. So um, thank you. Thank you all. It's been fun, really good fun. And I hope it's been helpful and informative. It certainly has been for me. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you.